Hello, everybody. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about wealth in the United States. This is pretty much the absolute worst topic, um, but actually uh, everyone is really interested in the United States in money. Um, there's actually huge amounts of debt uh, in the United States, uh, and there's also a lot of wealth. Um, but here's kind of the wealth map uh, for the entire United States. I just want to go through this really quickly. To start with, um, here's all the top cities around the world. You'll notice that a very majority of them are actually in the United States. Um, you know, you basically see, uh, you know, just only actually a few uh, outside the United States. Um, however, that's not the whole story. Um, here are the wealthiest neighborhoods in the United States um, and kind of a description about what's going on. So. In general, uh, most of the wealth in the United States is with older people. Uh, a lot of that is just in housing. Um, a big, about 50% of all that wealth is in investments. Um, so 50, essentially 50% is in housing and 50% is investments. Uh, there's a lot of technology wealth, uh, a lot of wealth in the politics, uh, media. And then interestingly, a lot of the wealth is actually along the ocean, rivers or uh, essentially water um, so that's another concept to think about so if you basically sum up all of these that's basically all of these cities uh, in summary um, so I kind of want to look at this map just really quickly here um, and you can kind of see uh, some of the major pockets so basically the wealthiest places are in green um, but in general the East Coast uh, has a lot of that wealth and actually it's centered around Washington DC unbelievably so uh, even more so than New York so let me just show you that uh, in a moment here so what really surprised me uh, now you know there's different biases here uh, but basically you can see uh, you know there this biggest pocket uh, there's definitely some wealth in California and in Washington and then actually out of uh, Colorado but on the East Coast, uh, interestingly, uh, you'll notice here as I zoom in, uh, New York has actually a lot of wealth, but actually when you look at this image kind of carefully, uh, you kind of notice it's around Washington, D.C., um, so that kind of surprised me uh, a little bit here, um, but you can see uh, as you zoom in here, there's actually this pocket of not too much wealth in New York, and you can see even Philadelphia and Baltimore, but actually in Washington uh, pretty heavily. Uh, uh, and even out into Virginia. So what that basically means to me is that, at least in the United States, a lot of the wealth is political, at least on the East Coast. Now, in Chicago, uh, you know, the farming stuff basically comes into play here, and you can see uh, there's just a lot of farming here, and that basically comes down to uh, Chicago's wealth uh, primarily. Uh, and then the, they trade commodities there in Chicago, uh, whereas they trade stocks in New York, um, and a lot of that wealth uh, basically ends up in Chicago, uh, Minneapolis, as you can see, out in Iowa, and then even St. Louis, and then down here. So, uh, But as we head out to the West Coast, you can basically see uh, a lot of that actually is in the Bay Area. And then second is really in Los Angeles. The interesting thing is that the Valley really doesn't have that much wealth, so the farming it really has a long way to go uh, in California. Um, actually, um, places like uh, Tennessee here, you can see uh, Memphis might actually be even more wealthy uh, in terms of farming uh, than in California. But you can see uh, LA is pretty wealthy, but uh, actually it turns out San Francisco uh, is doing a little bit better. And here you can see Portland and Seattle and I'll just zoom in and it will actually load in some of the details here. Uh, so you can see it's going to take a moment here. But you can see kind of the neighborhoods. Um, so interestingly, uh, in Seattle, uh, a lot of that is actually suburban. And this happens all around the United States um, in general. So let me go down to Portland here. And you can see uh, as well. Now, actually, it's a little bit more urban in Portland. And actually, this is a lot to do with farming. Uh, and actually this all goes down to Eugene so and you can see Salem right through here there's a big farming corridor there um, so and then in California uh, this really has disaster effect in California the Bay Area with technology you can kind of see 
uh, what's been happening. Uh, a lot of my friends have been having to move further and further out from San Jose. So a lot of that is actually uh, suburban uh, and even out into this range here. And you can see up into Napa and some other areas. And actually Sacramento really struggling. So really it's kind of uh, really amazing that uh, California's farmland is so poor. Um, but uh, you can basically see a lot of that is in the coastal. And then you get down to LA and we can kind of see some details here. I'll zoom in. Um, but again, you can see most of that is actually up towards Santa Barbara and the coastline and even uh, actually a lot of poverty uh, being right there and even in Long Beach uh, quite a lot. But you can see uh, heading down to San Diego uh, here. So let me zoom back out again and just look at these other places so you can see uh, some details in Chicago, uh, particularly that I'm familiar with uh, here. So uh, it's loading in and you can see a lot of that is actually on the north side. Um, and this is actually because the farming has actually moved up into Canada and actually out into here um, and actually getting poorer as you get further away from most of that farmland um, in the Midwest and heading down south. So you can kind of see uh, it's heading into here as well. So uh, let me just zoom out a little bit more. Um, let's look at New York City really quick just so you can see. The details there because we're going to get into some more details in a moment so uh, I'm a little bit familiar with New York um, but you can basically see a lot of this has moved out into Staten Island and even New Jersey uh, so it's actually being pretty poor up in the Bronx here um, and even uh, the whole uh, island here uh, Long Island actually being pretty wealthy all the way out so actually a lot of it has moved into the suburbs or directly just downtown and downtown Brooklyn. And here you can see Jersey City um, with actually quite a lot of poor spots, uh, even in Manhattan. So uh, this is kind of an interesting truth. Uh, we don't really see that uh, as you head down into Philadelphia and uh, Washington, D.C. So you can see here Baltimore and Washington, D.C. almost turns all green. So uh, it just kind of goes to show uh, that... There's a lot of politics there as well. So Miami is super interesting to look at. Uh, if you go down to here, you can see uh, basically what's going on here. And it's a little bit different than you might expect. So uh, actually here over in Tampa, there's actually a lot of poverty and there's actually farmland in through here. So uh, what I'm really hoping is that a lot of the uh, farming can kind of change uh, hopefully so uh, it actually uh, is surprisingly poor but then there's a pocket right in here that is very wealthy uh, basically Miami Beach but it's actually surprisingly uh, it could be actually a kind of affordable so uh, some places down in there but uh, let's just look at New Orleans and Houston really quick uh, so you can see the map on this, uh, but you can basically see uh, some of the same characteristics uh, that we also see. And I'll move over to Houston, and you see again there's that huge suburban area, and then down to Galveston in that area as well. So, and uh, some other areas. Hold on one second. So, I did a little bit of homework here on some of these neighborhoods. Um, you can see down here in Miami, it's just skyrocketed way high. So uh, what exactly is going on there? So uh, this is called Grove Isle Bay Shore, and I'll just take you to that really quick so you can see. So uh, if you're not familiar with Miami, um, basically uh, this is the Caribbean, and it's really tropical and uh, retirement center. So uh, basically this neighborhood right in here, um, you can kind of see as I zoom out uh, where this is. So you're basically talking uh, out to Key West and this area. Um, and you can see Tampa here, Orlando, uh, Fort Lauderdale, and some other areas. But if you zoom in and you understand what's going on here, it's all old people right in here. So basically what happened is that these people built a retirement center here um this little island was actually almost a landfill i believe so 
um, and actually it's kind of it's kind of sinking into the ocean. A lot of Miami uh, may be underwater, so this is kind of a debate. But you can see these uh, towers being built here, uh, and it's kind of loading in. But these are basically very simple buildings. Uh, there's actually a park here. It's basically a retirement community uh, right here, and there's a boat yard. Uh, you can see a hospital right across here, and then also other uh, retirement communities. So it's not even houses, right? So it's it's just like a retirement community. So uh, and it's fairly close to Miami, but it's not even downtown Miami. So uh, the interesting thing is that um, I, I don't know really where this this data comes from, but. Uh, I mean, I don't know anyone that would hang out down here really at all, right? So it's basically a retirement community uh, with nothing to do, um, which is kind of sad, but they probably organize uh, a lot of things. So there's actually separate whole neighborhood down here called Bayshore. Um, I mean, it's pretty exclusive area, um, kind of separate from Miami. So, uh, and even in Miami here, you can kind of see uh, what's happening, right? So a lot of this uh this is the port of miami here and it heads out to miami beach um, and this is kind of the more uh, typical spot for young people uh checking out the beach uh is right in here but even here it's hard to get access to the beachfront um unless you're at a hotel so it or you, there's basically no parking and there's no real easy access uh here so um it's interesting to look at this but uh, but essentially, you're looking at the wealthiest spot in the United States uh, is down in here. Uh, so, yeah. So the crazy part about number two here is it's all housing. Uh, it's actually in Colorado. So this is probably also a similar kind of a retirement place, but also, uh, you know, it's very mysterious. But uh, I'll go right to Sutton Place in New York and we can take a look at that. So I was first very surprised about Sutton Place, but you'll see uh, basically what's going on. It's loading this image in here. I'm sorry, it's kind of slow. Uh, there's just a ton of information here. So what is going on here? Actually, this is the United Nations. So uh, the wealth here is actually political. So it actually uh, isn't even investment wealth. Like uh, Wall Street is down here. This says financial district, but Sutton Place is over here. So. I think it's still trying to load. I don't even know uh, if it found it, but let's see here. Yeah, there we go. So uh, it's basically got this little neighborhood right here. So it's actually a really big debate, right? So uh, this is considered the west side, side and east side. Uh, people like uh, Barack Obama and different uh presidents political people have all lived in this neighborhood area and then there's also roosevelt island here um, so it's kind of a debate it may be not even known where the wealth is um, but you can see this is the united nations right here uh, and this would be sudden place right there so uh basically it's uh you know a few thousand feet this is a thousand feet right here uh from the united nations uh, and you can see, uh, you know, it's not really even Central Park. It's kind of not <laughs> really even the best place to live in New York. So even though it's the wealthiest, uh, it's maybe not even that great to live in. Um, you know, it might be nicer to actually live downtown in the financial district because you're right on the waterfront and you're, the air is actually cleaner because you're closer to the ocean. So that's an entire debate and even uh going down into uh brooklyn and red hook area here um you can kind of see this is uh, brighton beach um, and some other areas but let's look at the wealth map really quick in new york so you can see that specifically uh so basically uh uh it's a huge it's sorry about this uh, it, it's there if you're familiar with New York um, there's just a ton of stuff going on here so uh, you know there's a lot of low-income housing a 
all in here and you can see out in Newark um, and other things. So it's not at all what you might think. Um, there's definitely some really wealthy areas, but it takes a good hour or more to take the train into Manhattan from Brooklyn or in certainly in New Jersey side, it may take even longer. Uh, there's even a boat that heads out to uh, Staten Island that you can take for free. But again, uh, you can kind of see uh, here on this map. So there's actually, even though technically Sutton Place is the wealthiest, it looks like actually the financial district is a little bit more wealthy. And you can also see here on Roosevelt Island and actually New Jersey, Jersey City has whole new area uh, just in the last 10 years uh, that has kind of uh, really changed all of New York City so uh, and you can see uh, some other things here sorry if this is kind of uh, a little bit weird but you can see basically some details on this so that maybe makes sense uh this so the the crazy thing is on the main map uh for the entire united states right we already kind of made that argument uh that a lot of the wealth perhaps is political because actually it was next to the united nations if you noticed and you can tell washington dc is doing very well as well there so uh basically uh, the interesting thing is here you're heading into Alexandria, Old Town, Washington. Um, so let me just look at that really quick for you. So uh, if you're familiar with Alexandria at all, uh, so Washington, D.C., the capital is over here, but actually this is military wealth, right? So the scary thing about this is that we're already talking about, not only are we talking about retirement here, uh, in this wealth category, uh, we're also talking about political and they basically jump into military wealth. Uh, so basically, uh, the head point of the entire United States may actually be military wealth. Uh, if we are to argue that the main wealth is in Washington, D.C., uh, where is the wealth in Washington, D.C.? Well, according to the data, it's in Old Town, Alexandria. So that would suggest that, uh, and actually there's a lot of military stuff going on over here on this side of the water as well. So you can see Virginia here, uh, basically Pentagon and CIA, all those kind of guys uh, basically over here. So it's not even close at all, I mean, to uh, downtown, the capital, right? So it's certainly uh, different than you might expect uh basically uh but again it might be way better to live over here even though it is wealthier uh down here and we're basically seeing a lot of the wealth push out from the uh main downtown areas so you can see here's a joint base uh just a lot of things not even really showing all the details here but uh very surprising at least from my perspective uh to see that the military wealth uh is so significant and you can see uh i basically circled each one of these areas here so going back to this uh we basically have jumped right into uh this and we get tribeca uh that is actually uh more investment uh related uh let me see i think i already looked at that uh, Pacific Heights uh, is interesting in San Francisco. Uh, for example, that's also very political. Uh, for example, the uh, governor of, or the head of the, uh, I think it's House or Senate, uh, Nancy Pelosi lives uh, in Pacific Heights in, uh, as well as many uh, other kinds of political people. Uh, they have like, Washington Street or whatever runs right through uh, Pacific Heights uh, and you can see a uh, Gold Coast in Chicago uh, again Georgetown is more academic uh, with Washington DC and then Marina Los Angeles is kind of a different one there let's just look at that really quick so I chose this perspective of San Francisco basically from the north side because actually Marin is very wealthy so Pacific Heights is actually over in this region here. 
Uh, this is downtown San Francisco, uh, and it's actually way cooler to live in downtown San Francisco than Pacific Heights. However, the marina is over here, uh, and the marina district is pretty wealthy too, so you have like uh, boat access over there as well. So again, uh, the wealth numbers really don't tell you where it is cool to live or fun to live. Uh, for example, it's pretty much a retirement community in Sausalito over here. Uh, you know, uh, you have to be uh, pretty old to uh, even live here and afford this. So again, if you're looking at these numbers, uh, in general, the wealth is all old and it's actually looking like it's political and houses as well. So, uh, but hopefully this gives you a perspective of San Francisco a little bit. Let's just look at the wealth map in San Francisco really quick to get a perspective there. Sorry about this. I'm my computer's kind of trying to load this in. So uh, let's see what we can do here in the Bay Area uh, to see uh, what's happening. Uh, so you can see on the peninsula here, uh, basically down to San Jose, uh, it's actually kind of poor on this side. But uh, the truth is, uh, my sister lives over here, kind of in Oakland, in the poorer area, uh, Berkeley area, uh, but. My aunt and uncle over there too. It's actually the cooler part of the city. So even though, uh, if, if you think about it, uh, you're basically in the center here. This is the north and this is the south, and you're basically right in the center here. And yet, uh, it's actually thought of as kind of poorer there. So uh, again, uh, just because it's wealthy doesn't necessarily mean it's the best place to live uh, at all. So uh, it could actually be very frustrating. So. Uh, here I'll zoom in on San Francisco in particular and you can see uh, we're going to start to see the neighborhoods a little bit here and I think we're going to even see hopefully uh, uh, yeah so but basically uh, you can kind of see San Francisco here and Marin on the other side uh, but uh, this area uh, I mean it's just full of homelessness and uh, street problems uh, they've actually it actually helps the whole entire city in some ways because it's just uh, completely not affordable uh, unless there are people um, that are actually on a low budget. So, uh, and it's just kind of made it actually terrible in California in general. Uh, so where are we? Uh, we were trying to get to Marina in Los Angeles. Let's try to get down there uh, to show you what's going on. So this kind of surprised me a little bit uh, at first uh, if you know a little bit about LA uh, this might really confuse you so first of all guess what is over here in the marina it happens to be YouTube headquarters right over here so this is one of the wealthiest places in the United States it's where YouTube is and actually Long Beach is a uh, <clears throat> gigantic terminal this is the busiest uh, seaport in uh, one of the busiest in the world and certainly I think it's certainly the busiest in the United States uh, and there's also a military presence over here uh, as well so actually it's not that close to Hollywood uh, a lot of people would say Hollywood is very wealthy uh, but actually YouTube is down here uh, Hollywood is based this is Beverly Hills here in Santa Monica uh, but let's look at the map uh, so you can see what's going on there uh, down in LA uh, really quickly here. Sorry about this. I'm kind of going down the coast here into LA. So uh, this might surprise you a little bit. Uh, so there's actually quite a lot of poverty in LA, right? You can see uh, just from the map, downtown LA, it's actually even maybe considered worse than San Francisco. Uh, but uh, Long Beach, it actually doesn't even show up there, right? You see uh, just that pocket here uh, and kind of neighborhood by neighborhood uh, in and actually, uh, you know, this whole section probably being wealthier in general because there's basically the Long Beach, uh, this area um, actually has a lot of poverty, but just because YouTube is there, it just instantly takes up the whole entire uh, thing. So. That shows up as, uh, you know, definitely one of the wealthiest in the whole entire United States and the world. So, 
uh, but you can see Battery Park, New York, Upper East Side. So again, this is uh, Upper East Side is uh, essentially United Nations area. Uh, Central Park is also very close to United Nations, uh, and uh, more Miami stuff, and then Telegraph Hill, uh, Midtown, um, Embarcadero. So this is more uh, San Francisco, uh, and then you got Brooklyn here, uh, and then uh, Marina in San Francisco, and then Boston. So you're basically talking all New York, California, um, all of these, right? Uh, except for Denver right here, right, and then Miami. So uh, basically now you start to get into other places outside of those ranges and you're, uh, uh, you know, you basically get into Boston, Atlanta, Chicago, and then even more San Francisco again, uh, and then New York again, New York, and then Boston, and then more San Francisco, Philadelphia, Chicago. So, uh, yeah. So really, uh, Boston, uh, again, we had a lot of wealth in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, being political and also Georgetown University. Uh, Boston's really famous for MIT and Harvard, uh, as well as uh, biotechnology and some other things. Um, but you can kind of see here, it's actually surprising. Uh, you know, this is Cambridge out this way, uh, you know, major companies. Uh, are all located uh, right in there. Uh, let me just show you that wealth map specifically for Boston. I'll zoom out here, hold on a second. Okay, so here we are in Boston. Um, there's actually an interesting thing called Cape Cod uh, out here. It's actually very beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of little islands uh, and surprising things. A lot of people try to get out of New York uh, and move to Boston because it's more affordable. Uh, but you can actually see, uh, <laughs> It's actually a little bit surprising because uh, downtown Boston is really political. There's a lot of finance, uh, Fidelity, and some other headquarters are in Boston as well. Um, but you can see Cambridge um, is pretty wealthy. Uh, but again, a lot of that heads out into the suburbs. Uh, and it's just surprising uh, that, uh, you know, the downtown area actually is quite uh, not even that wealthy. Uh, there's a lot of people living here. Um, and... Uh, but still, uh, there you go. Uh, so we're going to try to finish this up as soon as possible. Uh, it's just a lot of people have been asking uh, for money and uh, help. And uh, I just wanted to tackle this problem directly head on. So uh, again, uh, it's actually a little bit weird. Like we've been talking about United States wealth. Uh, but is that really the whole story? Uh, maybe not. Uh, actually, most of the wealth is in Asia, and yet certain cities in the United States are very wealthy. So it's uh, kind of a weird uh, story here. So let me just show you that uh, really quick. Uh, so you can see uh, there's a lot of wealth in North America, Europe, Asia, China specifically, India, Latin America. Um, and, uh, hold on a second. Uh, so this is one, uh, research paper, uh, basically the total wealth of the world in trillions. Uh, you can see a lot of that, uh, there is a big section, uh, this is on a log graph. So you can see uh, North America, Latin America, India, Europe, China, Asia. Um, and there's actually one other thing uh, that I wanted to show you here. Just so hold on a second. So it's not actually the whole truth, and this has been changing around a lot. Uh, this report, uh, I think, is listed on Wikipedia, and let's just take the link really quick because it may have even changed last year. Uh, so this is the 20, so it actually is, changing quite a lot. You can see uh, Hong Kong is very high on the list. Uh, Beijing, Shanghai, London, uh, Moscow, uh, in India, Shenzhen, uh, right near Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Delhi, and then San Francisco. So uh, at the extremes, uh, New York is still very highly rated. Uh, and that's because they have the stock market there. So Basically, uh, Hong Kong is a slightly different case because uh, it does have a lot of finance there, um, but it also has Shenzhen, 
uh, which is a, and it's just right across uh, the river from uh, uh, basically China, right? So you can see Shanghai and Beijing uh, both being uh, up there. And if you take both of these together, you're basically talking more than New York City. So, uh, but there's some other data here that you may want to look at uh, on this side too. So you can see actually when it comes to uh, this data, you can kind of see North America looks pretty, uh, pretty well off, and then Asia actually starts to shrink down a little bit. So uh, this is like a terrible conversation to have, but uh, if you're looking for help, uh, this is kind of a, a start uh, to do that. Uh, and all these cities, and you can kind of see uh, where that wealth is coming from. Now, none of this ever made me happy personally. Um, I have tried to uh, make, uh, get a really good job, and all of that kind of stuff did not help uh, very much. Uh, you know, it, 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 it was helpful, uh, but it did not really last. So, you can try to pursue uh, wealth, but uh, I actually am doing better now, and I'm not actually really uh, trying to focus on wealth, uh, believe it or not. Um, so I'm trying to focus more on spiritual stuff and just being an awesome friend to people. Uh, so kind of alternatives to just uh, money. Um, but uh, you can generally see uh, where all this is. I am doing a little bit of this because I don't have any kind of significant amount of money. So I'm trying to come up with a way to help some other people that are keep asking me for some help. So uh, basically, these are the cities. These are the places where there is money. Uh, but uh, it is the thing that is not very obvious in all of this that you really should pay attention to is that it's actually a lot of it is suburban. Uh, what that kind of implies is farming. Uh, so it's a kind of an undercover concept here uh, that all the major cities uh, downtown actually have a significant amount of poverty. Uh, so the dilemma is that uh, you're not even living in New York. Uh, I mean, you could try to do, unless you're doing precisely what <laughs> that neighborhood is supposed to, the job in that neighborhood. So uh, basically, uh, there's a lot of people really struggling, right? So you can see the Bronx uh, being pretty heavily uh, having uh, some difficulty here, right? So uh, basically, uh, you kind of have to do the job uh, that the people are doing in that neighborhood. And the, the real estate can be very expensive. Uh, I mean, people pay thousands of dollars a month just in rent uh, in some of these places. So, uh, but uh, working with some of these people from the outside may actually be a good option. So, you can see it actually becomes more green as you move further away from the city. So, probability sake, you know, as you think about it, uh, you know, all these cities uh, around the world uh, are going to be different uh but as we zoom out um you can start to see uh basically every single major city actually is pretty poor relative to these suburban areas um so it's really a debate but at, in the end uh uh there's just a lot of debates there so uh you know i mean if you like a place uh then go with that but uh but in general, uh, there's a whole new uh, thing. So what I really hope to do with all this information is to completely redefine everything. So I don't think it's working out for anyone, really. Uh, the money situation, a lot of people are just really struggling. And uh, we have to kind of like rethink everything about this. So uh, not only the United States. So actually, the United States is perhaps at the center of this problem of wealth uh, because uh, we actually have the most significant debt. So it's not even, this picture here uh, is income, but it doesn't show debt at all. So uh, it may actually be an entirely red picture uh, for the entire country uh, when you think about that. So 
uh, and then it makes the rest of the world look way better. So this is a completely useless conversation uh, from that perspective because uh, we have to think about this very creatively uh, and totally differently. Anyway, I'm going to try to finish up this conversation a little bit later. Uh, I'm going to go take a walk and think about some things uh, because basically the way that we think about this is entirely wrong. Um, and I really hope that you think about it way differently um, because the numbers are not working. Uh, you know, what I'm noticing is a lot of people are just uh, kind of uh, really needing some major changes right now. Anyway, uh, I really want to close this out as soon as possible. Uh, I've been thinking about a couple other things, and I just wanted to comment that, uh, man, we have a long way to go. Uh, I don't really want to talk about uh, this kind of like, I, I, I just don't know what to say here. So uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the discussion. Let me know what you think. Let's try to talk about other kinds of wealth other than just financial. Thank you so much.